Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Rebecca Shi, and I am the executive director of the American Business Immigration Coalition. And we're so honored to be here, uh, hosted by my senator, uh, Dick Durbin. Let's give him a round of applause. Um, we're here today for the economic yeah. briefing on the tax contribution of spouses of U.S. citizens and long-term residents. Sorry. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, there is a great report in your folders from forward.us, and you'll hear shortly from um, Dr. Bill Connors on the actual finding from this economic uh, report. Um, the American Business Immigration Coalition, we are a bipartisan group of 1,400 employers and CEOs from Florida to Nevada, Arizona to Pennsylvania, representing agriculture, manufacturers, hospitality to technology. You hear from uh, several of our employers today. In the New York Times front page today, you may have seen a coverage of our Here to Work campaign um, urging President Biden to extend work permits to long-term residents and the spouses of U.S. citizens. We have three million open jobs, and this measure is economically <coughs> crucial. Uh, we were inspired by what the President has been able to do and so grateful granting work permits to 1.4 million new arrivals who came here over the last eight to 12 months. And we're asking the President to grant the same dignity of a legal work permit to people who have cleaned our hotels, picked crops, emptied bedpans, worked and paid taxes for decades, and 1.1 million are married to U.S. citizens. It is my pleasure to introduce Heather Gonzalez, the Vice President of American Families United. Good afternoon, and thank you for being with us today. My name is Heather Gonzalez, I'm the Vice President of American Families United, and I live in Powell, Ohio. We represent 1.1 million U.S. citizens across the country whose spouses are facing separation. The system doesn't work for U.S. citizens like me, and it doesn't work like you see in the movies. You do not marry an American citizen and automatically get a green card. We have members whose spouses were already deported or they have left the country and are now stuck trying to find a path back. We are U.S. citizens. We are your neighbors, your friends, and your colleagues. We are U.S. citizens fighting for our undocumented spouses. President Biden, we are tired and frustrated of being left out and we are not giving up. We have launched national campaigns across the country protecting American families with U.S. citizens and business leaders in events in California, Colorado, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Arizona, North Carolina, and Nevada. And we are growing, and we have a growing letter with 3,000 signatures asking President Biden to act now. No U.S. citizen should be forced to choose between their country or their spouse. We believe our spouses and parents of our children should be treated as genu generously as any new arrival has been. Some of us have been living this life in limbo for decades and more. President Biden, follow through on your promise and bring long overdue relief to Americans and mixed status marriages with the power of your pen. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce AFU member Geraldo from Illinois. Hi, I'm Gerardo Diaz, and first of all, I'd like to thank you, Senator Durbin, for all your hard work and for urging President Biden to give those work permits to some of our spouses. Um, and I am a blue-collar American, born and raised in Aurora, Illinois, and I am proud to be an American. However, I am very tired of waiting on President Biden to act on reuniting our American families, families like mine. Um, he has the authority, he has the power to do that. And we are urging President Biden to act because there's families like mine that have gotten separated. 
Me and my wife have been married for 11 years, and in the due process of immigration status change, we were separated, and now we've been separated for over two years now. I haven't seen my children in two years. So I am asking for President Biden to please act. And I am also urging you, uh, Senator Durbin and your colleagues, to continue to push that because there's over a million uh, of US citizens that are being affected. They have to hide in the shadows because they're worried about their spouses getting separated from them. So once again, thanks for all your hard work, but we'd like to uh, ask President Biden to keep uh, or to actually act on reuniting our families. Thank you. So, um, uh, thank you, thank, Senator, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, th thank you very much, everybody, uh, for being here. And Senator, thank you for your effort and, and the guidance on getting this uh, executive order done. Uh, so, my name is Sam Sanchez. I'm, I'm on the board of the National Russian Association, and I was the chair for the Illinois Russian Association for two years. Uh, we seen uh, millions of people come across the border and a million four got work, work visas. Or leaping over millions of Mexicans who've been here for decades. I have over 1,500 employees coming from Florida, California, and Illinois. I'm a founder of Urkel Hospitality, Sample Enterprise, and a new company is a Renewal Energy. Our employees and our undocumented pay over $17 billion a year without benefits. During the pandemic, to the good grades of the government and the unemployment, people were receiving $1,000 a week while they traveled to warm places and not returned to work. But the undocumented came to work like a fireman runs into a burning house without any consideration of their health. They wanted to go back to work and continue to pay the taxes, the one taxes that they got no benefits we are asking President Biden to please issue the executive order that we know he could do. He issued an executive order for work visas. He could issue an executive order for work visas. Mexicans are the leading, the, the largest community in the Latino community who have children that are in voting age, have grandchildren that are in voting age. There is no consequence that six of the tragic deaths that happened in Baltimore were undocumented and they were migrants. Because migrants built this country, are building this country, and will continue to build this country. I thank the senator for his hard work and the colleagues, the 17 colleagues that he put together. We are here, Senator, we need President Biden to issue an executive order for all long-term migrants and the Mexican migrants that have been here for decades paying taxes. Thank you, My name is LaShonda Williams. I saw you in the airport yesterday and said hello. <laughs> I'm a proud member of the Hospitality Workers Union, Unite Here, Local One, out of Chicago, Illinois. I serve on the executive board of the Illinois AFL-CIO, and I thank you again, Senator, for all of your hard work, for bringing us together today, and for always having our backs as working families. Before I worked in hospitality, I spent over a decade of my life serving kids, working for agencies like the Department of Children and Family Services. I've seen the pain that comes with children when they are separated from their parents, regardless of the circumstances. As a daughter of a single mother, I know how hard it is to not have a parent or both parents around. I'm an advocate with my union, and I will continue to be for comprehensive immigration reform and for work permits for all, because I cannot imagine the fear of worrying about my children being separated from me. I can imagine the pain of losing them because of our broken immigration system. 
As a mother of two sons and a former caseworker for young people in the state's care, I have often wished that I had the magic wand to protect our young and to fix the system. Well, right now, we can create that magic. We can create that magic of keeping families together by expanding work permits for long-term undocumented people. We can ensure that immigrant families and children have the stability and protection they deserve. We have the wand at our reach. Let's make this happen. Thank you so much, Rashonda. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Karen Kent. I'm the president of Unite Here Local One, uh, Chicago's Hospitality Workers Union. Uh, local One. Uh, I would like to thank Senator Durbin uh, for this meeting, this gathering, and for his steadfast leadership on behalf of uh, working people in Illinois and on behalf of our union. We really know your heart, Senator. Uh, our union represents thousands of hospitality workers in Chicago. Our members work at stadiums, airports, hotels, convention centers, and they are uh, majority women, people of color, and, color, and uh, immigrants from across the globe. Often, uh, newly arrived immigrants find their way to the hospitality industry as part of their first job. And through the years, we have welcomed immigrants from all over, uh, we've seen waves of Bosnians, from, folks from the Sudan, from Somalia and uh, China, to name a few. Unite Here, uh, my union and our international union, which um, I'm also here on behalf of, has been on the front lines of the immigration um, and organizing immigrant workers for years. We regularly negotiate contracts with language that protects uh, specifically designed to support and protect immigrant workers because we believe that immigrant rights are worker rights. There is no doubt that the immigration system is broken and uh, we need comprehensive reform to fix it. And our union has advocated for such reform for many years. We have never wavered in that. Uh, because in addition uh, to a union card, we believe the best protection for immigrants is a green card. And we support expanding work permits for long-term undocumented individuals because it's an important step to help in immigrant workers uh, be more secure in their workplace and to provide stability among immigrant families. We will no doubt continue to push for work permits for all, for comprehensive immigration reform and justice for all immigrants. And we will continue to organize the union because in addition to a green card, the best protection for immigrants is a union card. Thank you. Uh, for your leadership, uh, Mariana. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Mariana Gutierrez, and I am a college student. I am also a member of Western and Soul, and with Postinators, and I am a dreamer. And I want to thank um, Senator Durbin for being here today and for always fighting for our community, and I hope that other Democratic senators will join forces with my Senator Dick Durbin to urge President Biden to act. I've been in this country, in the United States, since I was seven months old. And for the past 22 years, I've been living in Chicago. This country is my home. I have been integrated into the American culture and there I am constantly told I do not belong. Despite dedicating the past four years, pursuing my education, I am prohibited from working in, in a public accounting firm, the absence of a work permit, hinders my ability to secure scholarships that will fund my master's program and prevents me from engaging in future, with future employers. My parents have also been here for the past 22 years. They work in factories and as truck drivers, but 
also struggle with finding good paying jobs with benefits. They work these jobs to ensure a family can make ends meet, just like any other person in this country. A work permit would give me and my parents access to better jobs and it would allow me to pursue my dreams and live, my full live out my full potential of becoming a CPA. Um, I'm here today to urge President Biden to use his executive authority to grant my parents and dreamers like me work permits and the right to achieve our American dream. Now, I'm very proud to introduce my senator, um, Dick Durbin from Illinois. like me, the new ones read from their phones. <laughs> I have something called paper. <laughs> but I'm not going to be reading this speech. I'm going to speak to you about some realities because it, I think we all understand what the challenge is. But I want you to put it in, I want to put it in perspective of why you're coming to Washington and being part of this message now is important. This afternoon, just two hours ago, we had an historic event on the floor of the United States Senate. The House of Representatives sent over articles of impeachment to remove from office uh, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, and you all know who he is. I see my friend Alex Padilla. Alex, come on up here. Senator from the state of California, senior senator, member of the Senate. <laughs> I just got started, so you haven't missed much of my speech. Uh, right. <laughs> Let me see. Alex is chair of the Immigration Subcommittee and Senate Judiciary Committee uh, in a key position. He's going to back up what I just told you. What we had happening up on the floor of the Senate two hours ago was an effort by the Republicans in the House of Representatives to denigrate the efforts of this administration in immigration and to do it on a personal basis against Secretary Mayorkas. It happens rarely in the history of the United States that articles of impeachment are sent over from the House to the Senate. But it demonstrates, I hope, to each of you the intensity of the feelings of those who are resisting any changes in our immigration law. We have colleagues in the Senate, we can name names between us, we know them well, who don't want one more immigrant in the United States. Not one, not one. Their feelings are that the immigrants have not been a positive part of our country and won't be a positive part of our future. They are wrong. They've always been wrong. They were wrong when my mother was carried off the boat in 1911 in Baltimore when she immigrated from Lithuania. They're wrong today for all the people who were here, proving every single day by their commitment to hard work, to family, to faith, that they want to be part of this nation's future, and they should be. America is a nation of immigrants, you know that. Thank God it is. Where would we be today without immigrants who came to this country? And the future of our nation is, is wedded to immigrants as well. We're at a point in our history where the so-called birth rate is not that big. We don't have new workers coming on board. We need new workers, desperately need new workers. And I will tell you, the ones that I need to come to this country are ready to work. They don't ask me, where's the government welfare office? They ask me, where can I find a job? And how soon can I start to work? Now, I believe in these people, and I believe in what they brought to this country. But I also understand the situation that they have created where many people have said, what about us? We've been here for a long time. 11 million undocumented people in this country. We raised our families. We may have overstayed a visa to start with, but our children are all American citizens. We go to work every day, and sometimes we get paid for it, and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we get the real wages, and sometimes we get nothing. And we are paying into not only federal taxes to the tune of eight or nine billion dollars a year, but also into Social Security, a system we don't belong to. We pay eleven billion dollars a year as undocumented workers in America into Social Security. We know that if we went forward and made these people, the undocumented citizens of this country, and they were given the opportunity to pay what they really should pay, be another five billion dollars coming into our treasury. So for our country, it's not only workers, it's also the future of Social Security. It's also our situation with our deficit. From a fiscal point of view, I can make a strong argument. There's an even stronger argument as far as I'm concerned. 
And it comes right down to the fact that we have a president of the United States who agrees with our position on immigration. Make no mistake, of the two major candidates, only one agrees with our position on immigration. Don't be misled. I take a look back and I'll just recount the history for a moment. Uh, it was about 21 years ago, or 22 years ago, that I introduced the DREAM Act. And the DREAM Act was really an effort to say, uh, we've got to be fair to young people like yourself. How old were you when you came here? Don't remember much of that, do you? You know, seven months old when she came to the United States. Her parents made the decision she went along for the ride. And thank goodness she did. And thanks for making such a great uh, life of your own and your investment of time. And I want you to be my CPA, okay? We'll work hard to get that done. So I introduced the DREAM Act over 20 years ago. I passed it on the floor of the Senate two or three times, but I could never, ever get it passed in the House and the Senate in the same year. Lucky for me, a senator was elected in Illinois by the name of Barack Hussein Obama. And Barack Obama came to the Senate and said to me, Durbin, I want to be a sponsor of your DREAM Act. I said, glad to have you, sir. Well, he not only was a sponsor of the DREAM Act, he went on to run for higher office. We all know that well, and he won. And as a consequence, I reached out to him. And I said, if I can't pass the DREAM Act and make it the law of the land, what can you do? President Obama, as President of the United States, to give some fairness and justice to these young people who were would be protected by the Dream Act. It took me a year. I sent one letter one year, and the next year I sent a letter signed by 22 senators asking for the same thing. And at that point, the Obama administration was ready to act, and they created DACA. That was created by President Obama by his executive order. And 780,000, at least 780,000 people have been protected because of DACA. Now DACA is not permanent and it's not predictable and we don't know what's gonna happen in the court next week, next month, and next year. So we wanna do things that are real comprehensive immigration reform. If we hadn't had the courts stop during the Trump administration, stop the applications for eligibility for DACA, we would be over two million today. So there are many who are eligible and haven't had their chance. The point I'm getting to is DACA was a presidential creation where we couldn't pass the law. We are in the same position now as I, far as I see it. We don't have the votes in the House of Representatives to pass immigration reform. We don't have the votes in the Senate to pass immigration reform. So we have joined 18 of us in appealing to President Biden to do what he can do as I asked President Obama. And the thing that I'm focused on, and I think for obvious reasons, is the spouses. The spouses of those uh, who are citizens of the United States, but for a variety of reasons have undocumented spouses. 1.1 million, I'm told, maybe it's larger. And there is sympathy in this country, obviously, for these people to unite their families without fear of a knock on the door and deportation. So the point I'm making to you is this is a valid effort. It is grounded in history with the creation of DACA out of the DREAM Act. This notion that we would uh, expand the legal uh, ability to work for the spouses of those who are citizens of the United States who are undocumented is a reality. It is good for our country. We need it now. But we're up against it. We're lucky to have Senator Padilla on our team. He is working hard, and he certainly, being from the state of California, knows this issue as well as anyone. Uh, and I want to thank him for joining us today. Why don't you let him say a few words? Alex Padilla, Senior Senator from the State of California. Thank you, Senator Durbin. A round of applause for Senator Durbin's years and years and years. Of the uh, I want to thank all of you for, uh, not just for being here today, but for your tenacity, for your activism, uh, and for not giving up, uh, we're going to persist until we finally achieve the comprehensive immigration reform that we need. But we know that in the meantime, we've got to uh, uh, still make progress in any way that we can. Uh, i got to tell you, I've been part of a lot of conversations about immigration and modernizing our immigration laws in the capital. Uh, but this one is actually an encouraging one. Right? This is a positive one for folks who uh, are committed, who understand it. Uh, and uh, are not giving up. Um, 
as you heard today, our communities, our economy, our nation, would not be what it is today without the contributions of immigrants over the course of generations. Uh, and I'm proud to say that my family's part of that story as well. Uh, my mom and dad came from Mexico in the 1960s. Uh, my mother from the state of Chihuahua, my father from the state of Jalisco, they met in Los Angeles. And as they keep pitching Hollywood screenwriters, they met, they fell in love, they decided to get married, and they applied for green cards in that order. And I thank the U.S. government every day for saying yes to those applications because if you stop and think about it, if they would have been denied, my life story would be a lot different. My life story would be a lot different. Um, I won't get into the details of the rest of my life journey other than to say I was blessed to be raised in California, uh, home to uh, the most populous state in the nation. And when I got here to the Senate, I got to my colleagues from all across the country, it was uh, a little eye-opening to me to see how they viewed California. On the one hand, they know that was well, the most populous state in the nation, the most diverse state in the nation, home to more immigrants than any state in the nation, both documented and undocumented. And then it sometimes felt like they were talking about a whole different place when they talk about California and the entertainment industry and the technology industry and you know the the, the fifth largest economy in the world. And I get to remind everyone, like, you know, you're talking about the same state, right? This most diverse state, home to more immigrants than any state in the nation, is the largest economy of any state in the nation. And it's not despite immigrants, it's because of the contributions of immigrants. Immigrants are tremendous entrepreneurs. We've seen that in a Little Village and a whole lot of other places. We're also tremendous workers. And we're huge consumers. Right? So we contribute to the economy, we contribute to the vibrancy of our nation in so many ways when it comes to business. We serve in the military, protecting our nation. Immigrants protect our health. You know, working uh, in hospitals and clinics you know, and not just in admin jobs or cleanup jobs, or nurses, doctors, uh, immigrants keep the agricultural sector uh, moving, of course, putting food to the tables across the country. Uh, innovators and scientists. How many startups are uh, immigrants or children of immigrants? Collectively, undocumented immigrants alone pay billions of dollars into state uh, and federal coffers each and every year. And Senator Durbin already talked about the health of our social security system depends on the contributions of immigrants. So it is no exaggeration to say that without immigrants, our economy would collapse. And yet too often, the uh, debate, the discussion about modernizing immigration laws in, Cal in, in here in Congress doesn't reflect that. Too often, some of the most vital uh, communities within the immigrant community are left out. Case in point, the uh, border security package that was negotiated over the last several months that uh, the Republicans ended up walking away from, but even that would not have helped a single dreamer, would not have protected a single farm worker, not a single essential, undocumented essential worker. Essential workers, people who worked in fields recognized by the Trump administration's Department of Homeland Security as essential to the safety of our country and our economy, not one of them would have benefited from that. And I think that's unacceptable. It's gotta be clear that when we make progress, we not leave undocumented immigrants who have earned better behind. Because every successful negotiation just tells us that, well, at some point we're gonna get back to this. We have to keep trying and trying and trying until we finally make it happen. So when we resume negotiations, we know that there's a lot of pieces to this from border security and the asylum system and talking about root causes, but we have to make sure we include relief to millions of long-term residents of the United States who happen to be undocumented, but have earned and deserve better than the treatment that we're giving them right now. Uh, especially 
people who are married to United States citizens or parents of them. People who have been here living, working, paying taxes in the United States, who are the cornerstone of their families and their communities in many cases, providing stability and certainty to them is not just the right thing to do. It is in our national interest and in our economic interest. So uh, you know, to, just a comment on today's report that shows that by extending work permits to the spouses of US citizens, we would add $16 billion more in tax revenue. That's a great idea. Whether it's reducing the deficit or investing more in healthcare, infrastructure, you know, education, environmental protection, or, or, or whatever else, uh, that's significant, significant money. We need to do more to provide stability and dignity for those who have earned it. And yes, I joined Senator Durbin in calling out the Biden administration to use the authority that they have to do this and more. And while we push for the president to exercise his executive authorities, we recommit to the long-term efforts here in Congress, the legislative process, to provide citizenship for essential workers, a pathway to citizenship for the millions of long-term U.S. residents, uh, and uh, more dignity and respect for them and their families. So uh, thank you all again for having me. Thank you for your advocacy. Uh, let's keep up the fight. Thank you so much, Senator Padilla and Senator Durbin for your leadership. Just to share a quick testimony from Allison Batista, a U.S. citizen who is directly impacted from Pennsylvania. Good afternoon. My name is Allison Batista. I'm a board member of American Families United, and in that capacity, I have worked closely with AVIC on expanding work permits for long-term immigrants because of how impactful that will be for me and American Families like mine. I'm a U.S. citizen from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm a former Spanish teacher in the Philadelphia public school system. My husband and I own a small commercial and residential construction company in Philadelphia. He is a Brazilian national who cannot successfully gain a path to legal status despite our 20-year marriage. Initially, I believed our marriage would be an easy fix to the problems he faced. But every legal opinion we've gotten since 2003 has come down to two options. We can either leave the US for 10 years or stay here in the shadows and cross our fingers that the law is going to change. I am 52 years old and after 20 years of marriage, I am still telling my family's story. I am one of 1.1 million US citizens with undocumented spouses and we are increasingly exhausted by the empty promises of this administration. Year after year, we continue to live in trauma and fear of separation, especially if an unfriendly administration takes over again. We see over one million new migrants who just arrived in the last eight months gain work permits and family reunification through parole, while our American families waited 20 years working, paying taxes, and creating jobs like my husband and I. We are stuck, left out, and feel disrespected. We have three children. When I started fighting for my family and families like mine, my kids were in strollers. Now, they're adults wanting to start their lives as contributing U.S. citizens, but their father's status remains an obstacle to their goals. I deserve to enter the next phase of my life peacefully without this constant fear of familial devastation by separation or exile looming over our family. If this warrants another 20 years of advocacy for me, I will be 72 years old. And I fear resolution may come too late for my family. Please, President Biden, use your authority to fix this. Grant relief to the spouses of US citizens. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator, for being here. My name is Matt T. Garden, and I'm CEO of the Kansas Livestock Association. President Biden, uh, ranchers, cattle feeders, and dairy producers can't find the workers that they need. We need to fix the workforce crisis. I urge you to grant work permits to long-term immigrants across the country who have worked and paid taxes for years. As someone who represents 5,700 livestock producers in Kansas, I can tell you the lack of farm workers is a key driver of sticker shock at the grocery store. Many ag-related jobs in our state are unfilled. 
when farmers and ranchers don't have workers to help care for their livestock or harvest their crops, we produce less and prices go up. However, this issue isn't just about food costs and inflation. Our ability to feed ourselves is in peril as we shift to becoming a nation that relies more and more on imports of agricultural goods. This should be unacceptable. America must be able to feed itself. Food security is national security. A nation that cannot feed itself is not secure. Long-term immigrants are already making invaluable contributions to agriculture, and many more have the skills to fill the gaps in our workforce and would do so if given the opportunity of a work permit. America's, uh, American farmers and ranchers produce the safest, most abundant food supply in the world. But unless we fix the labor crisis, we will see more crops rotting in the field, livestock operations unable to grow, and more of our food production moving overseas. Farmers and ranchers need workers now. I urge President Biden to use your administrative authority to grant work permits to long-term immigrants. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wisconsin and I'm also a U.S. citizen in a mixed status marriage. Uh, though I live in Wisconsin, I've always worked in Illinois and I'm very grateful for Senator Durbin's leadership. Uh, I'm hopeful that my Senator Tammy Baldwin follows his lead. I met my husband when I was 20 and now I am 40. Uh, we still have no path forward under current immigration policies, uh, very similar to our organization's other members. Uh, we have two kids now. I have a career that I love. I live in a city that I grew up in, not far from my parents. Um, my husband has worked in multiple industries that he represents here. Despite all this, my family can be separated or I can be forced to leave my country just like thousands of other U.S. citizens. These are the immigration policies that are actually hurting U.S. citizens. And 6,000 Wisconsinites are in the same situation as me. So if everyone could just think for a moment, um, if your family were separated, uh, had to separate, or were forced out of the country, how many people do you think you have in your life that would be upset? Like 50, 100, more? That's how many we each have too. Multiply that number by 6,000 and you have the real number of impacted Wisconsinites. Frankly, I am shocked that President Biden hasn't taken the issue of family separation of U.S. citizens seriously. He has the authority to act and provide our spouses with work permits and protection from separation. Families in Wisconsin and elsewhere are asking for President Biden's help today. Thank you so much. My name is Jason Rochester. This is my son, Ashton. This is my mom, Diane. This is my wife, who is in Mexico at the moment. Um, this is Sunshine from Teamsters. And they're a big supporter of mine. Uh, it's been a blessing to have them on my side. Um, we're from Atlanta, Georgia. And my wife has been in uh, Mexico for six and a half years. We've been married for 17 years. Um, Six and a half of those years we've been separated. Ashton has had to uh, live over half of his life with his mom in Mexico, even at the age of five, when he had to endure cancel, cancer and all of his devastating side effects. He couldn't have his mom with him. Uh, Ashton's childhood is anything but normal. All of his important milestones are celebrated with both happiness and with both happiness and sadness. <laughs> because to see it can only be present through a computer screen 
which you can see right here. Um, I'm here today as a member of American Families United. We represent 1.1 million uh, U.S. citizens in similar situations. Um, we're here to urge President Biden to use his existing legal authority to pass author work authorization paroles for families like mine um, so that our families can have relief from being separated or living in fear of being separated. It would allow families like mine to be reunited. It would allow Ashton to enjoy a normal childhood with both parents while we continue to fight for a more permanent solution. We've seen President Biden grant parole and family reunification to hundreds of thousands of new migrants from Venezuela and Cuba over the last year. AFU has a political report showing many of us live in swing states where our numbers are greater than the vote difference between the winner and loser of the 2020 elections. We're asking President Biden, when is it going to be our turn? We've waited for 10, 15, 20 years. When will you treat American families with the same dignity and respect as new migrants? I'm asking you to give mixed status families the same opportunities that you gave to others under the CHMB parole program and the family reunification parole process. After all, we are American citizens and we're willing to sponsor and support our spouses. In fact, I personally have paid many thousands of dollars into the Mexican economy, paying for my wife's home in Mexico, her travel, her food, and all that money could be coming to our, our country. Um, and had Cecilia been here into this country, she would have been working, she would have been contributing to our economy and not Mexico's economy. So, this would have, I got a little sorry. This is, uh, would help our economy and generate millions in tax revenue. Thank you. I'm the CEO of Winton Machine Company in Suwannee, Georgia. 25 years ago, my husband George and I started our business in the basement of our home, the American Dream. We are proud to, be, to build sophisticated manufacturing systems right here in the United States. But we desperately need more workers. We talk about manufacturing and the growth here in the United States and bringing back and reshoring. We need the people to fill those jobs. If we're going to continue to grow and thrive in the coming years and to get these workers, we need President Biden to use his authority under current law to extend work permits for immigrant workers who have been contributing to the U.S. economy for years. I appreciate Senator Durbin's leadership in this issue, and I'm glad that my Senator, Raphael Warnock, signed on to his letter urging the President to grant work permits to a critical group of immigrants who could possibly oppose enabling American families to work and pay taxes. Across the state, the labor shortage is being widely felt. The United States Chamber of Commerce has ranked Georgia more severe when it comes to labor shortages. We currently have 54 workers for every 100 open jobs. I have had an ad running for a machinist. It's taken me six months to fill that position. I work with the technical colleges, we have apprenticeship programs, we have internship programs, but we don't have enough workers to fill these positions. As hard as we've been working to recruit young people to attend technical schools and choose careers in manufacturing, we cannot keep up with our labor needs and it is only getting worse as baby boomers retire. I do not know how we would have done it without the incredible foreign workers we have had over the years. Our very first employee, Tron, came here as a refugee from Vietnam and is still with us today, 25 years later. He's father to a son who was an intern for us, who is now an engineer. There are countless immigrants eager with deep roots in our communities who are ready to work, yet constrained by the immigration reform gridlock in DC. Unlocking their labor power via work permits is a practical solution President Biden can activate right now 
President Biden, I encourage you grant workforce authorization for long-term immigrants, keep manufacturing here in the United States, and fill our factories with workers. Thank you. Amanda? Thank you, Senator, for, some, for being here today. My name is Amanda, and I'm representing the 17,000 U.S. citizens who have undocumented spouses from the state of Michigan. I have been married to my husband for almost nine years. We have two kids together who are currently here with me to their in the back. Um, we have been dealing with my husband's immigration issues for years. We tried doing things the so-called right way, but it was not successful for us due to inadmissible bars. Um, he was denied his return to the U.S with our family after his consular interview in Mexico. We suffered a lot over the years. At the beginning of 2023, I got a call from my husband's family in Mexico letting me know he, that he had an emergency and needed help. It turned out that possibly due to the stress of the situation, my husband suffered a brain aneurysm and needed emergency brain surgery. I was thousands of miles away and completely helpless. I picked up my life and immediately went down to the remote part of Mexico where he had been living to be at his bedside. I'm grateful that he has fully recovered now, but even in this circumstance, we were unable to get any type of relief. Thankfully, my husband is here with us in the US from other legal channels, but this does not fix the problem due to inadmissibility bars. This still means that we live in fear of any laws that might change. We are now asking President Biden to give our spouses work permits because this directly impacts 1.1 million, million of Americans who have undocumented spouses. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator um, Adilla and Senator uh, Grijalva for sending uh, his stuff today. Our prayers are with you. My name is Everett Sanchez from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm, I'm a proud uh, US citizen. I love this country as many others. I believe in the opportunities and freedom it can provide to good people. As an Arizonan, I'm one of 32,000 Arizona families pleading with President Biden to grant work permits for immigrant spouses. I am married to an amazing woman named Rosa Elena. She's a DACA recipient. Rosa owns and operates a small family carpentry business in Arizona, where she works hard to provide not just for her family, but also for her parents, employees, and our community. She's a wonderful mother and a pillar of strength for her five daughters. Our family is one of so many who embody the American dream. Our 13-year-old um, recently had the chance to perform with her mariachi band at the White House. I never imagined that our broken immigration system will threaten uh, to separate my family because of outdated laws. Rosa could be could be forced to leave our children, our home, our community behind. We came to Washington DC to try to fix this problem and keep our family together to help other families. Spouses of US citizens like my wife should not be separated from their families. America can help by granting affirmative, affirmative relief now. There are 32,000 Arizona families once again in my situation. I am hoping my Arizona Senators Mark Kelly and Kristen Cinema can follow Senator Durbin's leadership in fighting for Arizona families by demanding that President Biden can uh, grant work permits to spouses of US citizens. As today, my family is not broken yet, but it might be at any second. The problem is not knowing when it might happen. Living like that, living like as, as a U.S. citizen, is not that's not the American way. No American should feel this fear, the one that I'm feeling right now, and that you feel. 
Let's protect American families today. Thank you. This means I have to go. <laughs> but my staff will stay. Thank you for being here. Rebecca, thank you for your leadership in this coalition. Uh, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. We're going to continue the fight and we're going to win. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lily Williams, um, and this is my son, Ian. Um, we're both United States citizens from Pennsylvania. Um, I'm married to a wonderful Honduran man, um, and I have been for about 14 years. One of the things we're tired of is waiting for the administration, President Biden, to act for American families like mine. Um, our ask to President Biden is that he please grant my American Pennsylvania family the opportunity to live in safety, um, to grant my husband and all spouses of US citizens a work permit. My husband and I fell in love and got married. We had a son and now we have another one on the way. Um, we became first time homeowners a couple years ago. We've owned three businesses together, a cafe, a coffee shop, and now a landscaping business. We have been job creators, we've been employers, but my husband still can't be an employee for his own businesses. We need the government to take action that are in their control to allow us to grow our family, our businesses, and lives securely without worrying about what tomorrow will bring. We had a one close encounter, um, May 11th, 2017, I had to ask my husband over the phone, do you want to risk staying in immigration detention for months in order to fight for our lives here, or do you want to give up and sign the documents to leave and we'll make a new life in Honduras? Um, my husband had been detained by two immigration enforcement officers who were waiting outside of our home early one morning while he was on his way to work. Um, he had called me from the Philadelphia ICE office after terrible hours and not knowing where he was and talking to lawyers and trying to figure out what to do and just waiting, which is the worst. Um, in, our co in our case, we chose to fight. We chose to fight and were successfully able to get significant movement. Um, he had missed a court date um, when he was a teenager and that was forgiven. And we seem to be in a path forward to living a safe, secure, and normal life in the United States. But immigration cases are long and tricky. Um, which is kind of how this is for him because he doesn't understand the impact, so sorry about that. Um, even after we thought everything was finally set right, um, and my husband finally have a legal residency here, the COVID pandemic happened and shut down travel to my husband's country. It shut down the United States, it shut down the United States Embassy, and it canceled all visa appointment. Um, because we could not leave the country and we could not go to the visa appointment, in the allotted time that we had been given, my husband is once again out of status and by no fault of our own. We had to file yet another immigration application for forgiveness um, for not going out of the country to the visa appointment that had been canceled. We're still waiting for that response four years later um, and have no indication that anything has happened. A lot happens in the time we're stuck in immigration limbo. We started my husband's immigration case when we were married in 2014. Um, an entire decade has passed since we started the immigration process. Maybe one day there will finally be an answer and resolution to my husband's case. But while we wait for that day to come, I ask that you please provide relief so that my family and others like ours can have security in the United States. Thank you. Lily, I think um, people have heard reference to this great economic report um, Senator Padilla and Durbin have cited. I'm, I'm happy to welcome Dr. Phil Connor, the senior demographer of Forward.us, to present the findings from uh, this report. Hello, everyone. I am Phil Connor, senior demographer at Forward.us, and today I am here to present the economic impact case uh, for extending parole in place to undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens. 
Uh, as a reminder, while the Biden administration has made significant progress leveraging existing legal avenues for new arrivals, there is much more that can and must be done to provide protections, relief, and opportunity to individuals who have lived in U.S. communities for many years, if not decades, such as undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens. President Biden should expand eligibility for parole in place to spouses of U.S. citizens, both for the significant benefits that parole would afford them and their families, but also our economy. So I'm a demographer, I like to count people, and according to Ford.us estimates, some 1.1 million undocumented people are married to a U.S. citizen. And an estimated 2.5 million U.S. citizens live in these mixed status families, when you count spouses, children, and other family members that may live with them. And on average, these undocumented spouses have lived in the U.S. for 16 years, that's on average, and on average are 41 years old, and have been married to their U.S. citizen spouses for many, many years. As already I mentioned today, some 90,000 of these undocumented spouses are DACA recipients. And the overwhelming majority have high school diplomas, and nearly half have some amount of college education. Now, these, these individuals having lived in the U.S. for several years, undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens are already highly integrated into the U.S. economy. The majority are in the labor force, and the overwhelming majority of their families are living above the poverty line. More than half of their households own their own home. An estimated 560,000 undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens already work in labor short industries, but often face barriers to being employed in positions they would be capable of filling if they had a work permit. With work authorizations, they would have greater flexibility to be able to work in positions with greater industry need, which would expand their productivity, allow new individuals to enter the labor force, and ease the inflationary pressures for everyone in the U.S. That's not all. Undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens already contribute an estimated $26 billion annually to the U.S. economy and spending power. And Ford.us analysis, however, shows that undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens would contribute an additional $16 billion annually to the U.S. economy if they were U.S. citizens, and a $5 billion additionally in combined federal, state, and local taxes if they were U.S. citizens. Undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens are also taxpayers, and each year their families pay more than $21 billion annually in federal payroll taxes, and a further $11 billion in state and local taxes. And if we look at the previous decade, our estimates show that their families have contributed some $173 billion in federal and payroll taxes, with an additional $89 billion in state and local taxes. So, to sum up, the Biden administration should immediately expand eligibility for parole in place to undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens. It's the right thing to do for these families, but also for our economy. Um, I am uh, pleased to introduce from North Carolina, Jimmy Rivera and her daughters. And we just have a couple more speakers left. Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Rivera and I am from North Carolina. I am a U.S. citizen, spouse of a long-term undocumented immigrant, and I'm here today to ask President Biden to act for my family, the 23,000 other North Carolinian families like mine, and the 1.1 million U.S. citizen spouses in my situation across the country. We need the president to grant work permits to our spouses. We are sick of waiting when we have worked and paid taxes for so many years. I am also here today to tell you about my family. My two daughters here are amazing. They are our future. They are the future voters of this country. They are the reason I continue to fight to keep my family together. They would not be the people they are today if it was not for my amazing husband. He is my balance. He is the fun person who gives them the experiences. I am the mother that keeps the family organized. It takes both of us. 
We contemplated him leaving the country to start living out his bars, but we could not think of a time when our children did not need both of us. We sh why should my children have to suffer? Why should I have to choose between my country and my family? Here is my daughter Mackenzie to tell you her story. I'm here today to talk about my dad. He's a silly little man who acts like a big kid all the time. He loves soccer and finding ways to annoy me and my little sister. Since the beginning, he has been my guardian and supported me through all the changes I have gone through. He has coached me through life and through soccer and has taught me how to become the person I am today. In 2020, I learned of my father's situation and the nightmare that has been of him if he was taken away. And what I daydream about every day of this nightmare. The thought of that sits in the back of my head as a constant reminder. A reminder, it reminds me that my family is different. We are forever in the shadows, scared, and imagining all the what-ifs that could happen. Today, we are asking President Biden to grant my father and others like him work permit and parole so we can stop worrying about, what, about him and having to leave the country and splitting up my family. We're asking members of Congress to please urge President Biden to help our families. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annie. And uh, Manolo. Hi, my name is Iraida Flores. I was born in Ciudad Obregón, Sonora, Mexico, and have been a Phoenix, Arizona resident for 20 years. I own a very successful wholesale and retail seafood business, importing the fresh seafood from Guaymas, Sonora, in Sonora, Mexico, with locations across Arizona. I have created many jobs right here in this country. I am living, breathing, example of the American dream. But along the way, I had to face many struggles in my pursuit of a green card, which I'm proud to share I received it last year. Am I using this or no? <laughs> uh, I'm, I am just one example of the potential immigrants here for our communities and economy. But there are many more stories like mine. That's why I'm here. President Biden should be granting work permits to immigrants when he doesn't act. It allows state legislators like some of those in my own state to try to pass harmful offensive legislation that forced immigrant workers to live in the showers in fear. As a business owner, I can tell you, President, we need more workers and immigrants are here to work. President Biden, you are a leader, so lead. So don't wait on others use your authority to grant work permits to the long-term immigrants who are fueling our economy. Thank you. I used to be a painter. <laughs> when I was a kid in South America, I learned two things about USA. One, it was the American dream. And two, this is the land of opportunity. 24 years ago, I had to leave my country because we were in a war country, because I was in a war country. I came here with two pairs of shoes, two pants, $900 in my pocket, and I didn't speak the English. If you, you can say, you are the oldest guy in the world, I said, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> now, I'm the CEO and owner of Manolo's Bakery, three more businesses, I employ 70 people, uh, and I have millions of dollars on sales. So I can say I found the American opportunity and I am the American dream. I also can say I'm an immigrant and a father and a proud American citizen. And as American citizen, I want to ask the president to please grant work permits to long-term immigrants who have been here for years and even decades. Immigrants build this nation and immigrants still do it. As a small business owner, owner and American citizen, I need more people to work and I don't have enough people. The dreams of immigrants build these nations and immigrants are still dreaming 
look around, and they are working because identity, change, and the history from making. Now, I speak for the millions of immigrants that was, and they are still in the shadows. They are still paying taxes and contributing to the system and contributing to this country. I know how broken our system is. I had a departmental order myself. My immigration attorney in Virginia, the entire immigration in North Carolina, I switched states. They didn't find me for an interview, but they found me for a deportation. So it took me years and thousands of dollars to get this situation through, this situation fixed. What a waste of money, what a waste of our system. But my pain is nothing compared to your pain. You are the bravest people in the world. And I am Maro, I respect you, and your fight is my fight too. Thank you. And I can imagine the life. I ask the president to fix the situation soon. And I also ask the president if one day he's in North Carolina, I stop by my bakery and eat 12 veggies cake and ice cream. Thank you so much. <laughs> brings a close to our program. Uh, we ask President Biden to bring this home. President Biden, you have seen this coalition. You have seen our legal memo. You have seen the economic memo, the polling that says this is supported by the American public, and it is economically important and politically smart, and you have the power to act. Please act now. Thank you all very much. Coffee and refreshments in the back.